With the Lisbon Treaty, European social values such as the right to employment, social protection and gender equality have been recognized in the treaties for the first time. Social and employment policies in the EU were developed as a counterbalance to the single market. And now, faced with the social cost of the economic crisis and austerity measures, more voices are calling for a more social Europe, especially from the European Parliament. But does this social Europe really exist? If yes, what does it look like? Let's see if we can find out. Will it be like a student? or more like a young person searching for their first job. One of the main initiatives of the Europe 2020 strategy for driving sustainable growth is Youth on the Move, a package of policy initiatives aimed at boosting education and employment opportunities for young people and promoting mobility. With more than 7 million young Europeans out of work or training, the Youth Guarantee seeks to ensure that no young person up to the age of 25 spends more than four months out of work, training or work experience. But how is this goal going to be reached? Let's do the sums. Up to 80 billion euros will come from the European Social Fund, added to which the Youth Employment Initiative will provide 6 billion. 86 billion euros per year split between the 28 EU countries makes 3 billion per country to supplement their national funds. If we count the cost to Europe of having 7 million young people out of work, estimated at around 150 million euros per year, it seems the effectiveness of the youth guarantee is far from guaranteed. What other facet could a social Europe have? Will it have the profile of a migrant or posted worker? Free movement of workers is a fundamental principle of the European Union. In theory, everyone has the right to work in another European country and be treated equally and receive the same social and employment benefits. But in practice, this isn't always the case. Let's suppose that as a Spaniard, I decide to go and work in London. What can the EU do to protect my rights? To find out, I'm going to speak to Bernadette Segol from the European Trade Union Confederation. I think that first and foremost, Europe should provide thorough information. Then they must work on the difficult issue of pensions. But the European institutions can't do everything. The Commission can't ensure that all working conditions are correct. There are many areas which are national competences. With 28 different laws, it's not always easy to find a way out. But we're going to keep searching. Is poverty and exclusion the face of social Europe? With more than 80 million Europeans affected, nothing can mask the scale of the problem. For the first time, the Europe 2020 strategy has set out clear targets to lift 20 million people out of poverty in the next five years. As a result of an agreement reached between the Parliament and the European Council, to the 20 billion euros provided by the European Social Fund, a further 4 billion will be added from the Fund for European Aid to the Most Deprived. But will this be enough? The money obviously is not enough, given that, that the problem is so huge. Um, however, the money helps. And it helps uh, in, in terms of member states fulfilling their obligations. The EU has no, not a real legislative mandate. and. Uh, if member states are not voluntarily pursuing anti-poverty strategies, it is very difficult to convince member states to do so. Although social policy falls under the shared competences of the EU and member states, for the most part they are determined at national level. It's the nation states that decide which unemployment benefits, pensions or social support their citizens have the right to. This means that the only role that the EU can play, apart from laying down guidelines, is to support and supplement. A student, a worker, a young person, an old person, a man, a woman. Social Europe is multifaceted. Perhaps in the coming years we will be able to gain a clearer picture. But for now, our quest ends here.